Welcome back guys, Dr. Derek King here with YourBrainChild.org, educating parents for student success. You ever see that movie Drumline? It starred Nick Cannon. It was about Nick Cannon being a drummer at a historically black college or university or HBCU. Well this video is going to tackle that subject. I want to give a special thank you to Dr. John Graham at the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff who is the director of bands. This video is going to be a little bit of a departure. You're not going to really hear me talking that much. What you're actually going to see is Dr. Graham um, giving some instruction to you, the parents, and I, again, thank you, Dr. Graham, regarding the best practices of getting your child accepted to a historically black college or university on a band or music-related scholarship. Let's get started. In describing the excitement and vigor that ex-slaves had for learning, these powerful words were written. Few were too young and none too old to make an attempt to learn. Booker T. Washington. Hi, I'm John Graham, Director of Bands for the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff. I'm here at the Black College Expo in Los Angeles, California at the Convention Center. And I'm sitting here, I, I have the privilege of being in the midst of several students here. What is your name? Kayla. Michaela. Michaela. Kayla. Kayla. And, and what do you want to do when you go to school? I actually want to do crime scene investigation. You want crime scene investigation. That's yeah. excellent. And what, what is your name? My name is Queen. Hi. Hi. And what do you want to do when you go to school? I want to do. I want to become a music teacher. You want to become? I want to go to music education. Music education. And who do I have? Isaiah. Isaiah. What would you like to do? I want to be a doctor. A doctor. And one of the things that um, that I get the privilege of doing as director of bands, I have a band of about 275 students. We have a wind symphony, two concert bands, jazz ensemble, and small ensembles. And a marching band that has all of these students involved in it. One of the great things is <coughs> we offer scholarship money, over a million dollars, for students to be a part of our band. And as you can see, these young people have different interests. All of our band students are not necessarily music majors. And a lot of times we as teachers and educators don't realize that in our avocations of what we do, our hobbies and, our, and the, the things that we do for fun can also be a source of revenue and income. Because our students on our campus are involved in every aspect, in every degree area, and they do not have to have a band, they don't have to be a music major to uh, earn a music scholarship, we're able to bring in a lot of students from a lot of different areas. So a marching band is made up of not just music, uh, or we, as we like to call them, band geeks. They're made up of students who enjoy music, for performance, different styles of music, and they get to come to college and be part of a group. Here's the central thing that we also have found. Studies have shown that when students go to college and they're involved in any type of extracurricular activity, whether it's basketball, choir, or in my case, the band, they are more likely to stay and get their education. And why? Because it gives them a sense of belonging. It helps them, it gives them a sense of family when they're not in school. Uh, they have a friendship. And on a Friday night, mom and dad, you know where they are. They're going to be at the football game, they're going to be at the basketball game, and it gives them wholesome fun. They travel. Our band, particularly, in particular, we have performed for President Obama's inaugural parade. We've performed for several uh, NFL games. We've performed for uh, professional basketball games. We have been exhibitions at venues such as the Honda Battle of Bands. And so the students get used to performing. They're getting used to being in front and with pressure and meeting deadlines and self-organization, which is one of the major facets that we have found that students lack in their studies, which causes them to necessarily, unnecessarily fail. Our students are bright, they're brilliant, they're very capable, but having an organization to become a part of that requires study habits and organization can help them really with their own personal self-actualization and the understanding that they can have goals. So regarding um, SAT, GPA, those type of things, what should the students target be? Okay, let's talk about preparing for college. The GPAs are essential. A lot of times students have weighted GPAs or they have a standard GPA. We like to look at what is the raw score. Uh, so students scoring within a we know that there are average students who we call a late bloomers who may have them the mid from 2.5s and up. That's fine, and those students can sometimes be, get, do their best work in college. We like, everybody wants to see that 3.5, 3.6, 3.7, 3.8. We push them toward that. But we also cannot overlook those students with the 2.5 who are late bloomers. The ACT, SAT scores, <coughs> our school in particular, we look at ACTs. 
the SAT certainly is a, is, a, is a measure that universities are using, colleges are using. 24s and 25s, yes, those are, those are important, but they are not necessarily true indicators on a student's worth and what they can do. Unfortunately, if they start to score below a 22 or 21 ACT-wise and the reading and math skills are not in place, it may impact them having to take remedial courses. And remediation in higher ed is a major issue because of funding. Students have to have financial aid to help them assist going to school. Now, let's talk about the band audition. Scales. On wind instruments, scales. All of the 12 major scales, full range of the instrument, and they should be played like you're a professional. You want to play those scales, you can go on YouTube, you can get some lessons, and you can play those scales. It's fluent, it should sound like you're talking, carrying on a conversation. A etude, which is a study on your instrument that demonstrates your ability to play that instrument at a high level, designed for your instrument, is important, and a solo. Those are two indicators that we use, uh, etude or solo, and the scales that we as band directors listen for. Percussionists, you use rudiments, plus mallet percussion, xylophone, bells if you have them, marimba. Those solos on those instruments, as well as your snare drum rudiments, and a solo that you're actually reading. A lot of times students on percussion want to play a, 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 a cadence. Cadences are great for parade marching if you're reading them, but we want to see you reading. Again, going back to education, literacy and music is very important on our level because that means we can teach more music and the students really do much better who are musically lit, uh, uh, literate in their other score, in other courses, such as they're in any course that requires quite a bit of reading comprehension. So if a student isn't musically literate, does that restrict them from being able to be accepted? Yes. You know, one of the great movies, Drumline, we, one of the, I, I, it's okay, and there's some fiction in that, but one of the things that I really appreciated that they brought to the, uh, uh, to the forefront was Nick Cannon, who played that snare drummer in that particular movie, could not read. Reading, this is university playing, and I implore all band directors to be sure that your students are musically literate, that they can read music, because it's, you know, we don't teach a lot about rote in the college. We can take you for, from a certain point, but reading, being musically literate is very important, and in particular percussion, there are so many. So it's very, very, very uh, competitive, uh, so we really want them to do well there. All right, well, thank you very much. So this is John Graham, Director of Bands, University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff, wishing you well and go Lions. Well, I hope you found that video helpful. One of the questions that you may have after watching that video is, do I have to be African American to attend an historically black college or university? No. In fact, it might be a little bit easier if you're a non-minority to get accepted at a historically black college or university simply because of the racial makeup of the school. There are 107 historically black colleges and universities, you know, with a wide range of majors from law to medicine. I invite you to go ahead and find out, you know, which one might be a good fit for you. Question of the day. How did this video help you? Do you have any other questions regarding historically black colleges and universities, how to get a band scholarship, how to get a music related scholarship or anything of that nature? Again, Thank you so much for watching this video. If you haven't done so already, please go ahead and click the subscribe button. That way you don't miss any of our Sunday or Thursday updates. Don't forget, if you have any questions, please go ahead and put them in the comment section. Share this video with a friend. Give me any comment and don't forget to like it and I'll see you next time.